Right. I got the point forming die. You notice that it's, we had this backed out quite a bit. Now we're going to go ahead and start turning this down until we start feeling resistance again. What I actually need to do is I need to back out this hollow pointer. For some reason, this thing was really stiff, even from the factory. I'm not sure what was going on. So I'm going to back this out. It, the reason why this is chewed up is because of my vice grips. Alright. I'm going to turn this down until we feel that resistance. That's where we're putting the O-Jive back on the bullet. Once we feel that kind of resistance, we run this down. So when we knock the bullet out, we don't end up changing the position of this by beating on it. I want to put a little bit more of a no drive on there. There, that felt good. Yeah, that's pressure there. You're probably putting about 25,000 pounds of pressure on this. Okay. Not quite where we want it, but it's close. Now we're going to start running down the hollow point stem. You're going to feel the resistance on it. Are we there yet? We're real close. Oops. And if the die moves, even a little bit, you want to run it back in and see how it affected it. If it affected it to the point where it's changed a little bit, um, once you get where you want it, go ahead and use a wrench to tighten this down. That's pretty much it. Let's go up through there. There are several ways to clean these up when you're done. You may have a little bit of um, excessive lead flow coming out the tip of the bullet. Now on this last one, I'm going to zoom in. I want to show you what it looks like when it goes in, when it comes out. We have the bullet. On the swage punch, we're going to run it up. Can the press over. And just like that, we're done. We have a 99% completed bullet. There's only one last step we can do to really clean it up. And we're going to show you that right now. Then we're going to take close-ups with these. All right, pretty much we are done. These bullets are absolutely complete. In order to clean up that tip there a little bit, use a little deburring tool. Run on the outside a little bit there. So the excess of lead off there. And it cleans out the inside of that mouth. It's really nice. This one doesn't have a post in there to get in the way, so it makes it for a real nice, um, I guess you call it a meat plot uniformer, I guess. I mean, not truly one, but it's basically what you're doing is you're truing up the meat plat on the nose of the bullet. I'm going to save this last one that we didn't do just for comparison. Yeah. 
And there's like little bits of um, lubricant on there that's grabbing any um, material that you cut off. When you put them through the tumbler, it'll take all that stuff off of there and it'll be gone. Let me get a close up of this, then we'll weigh them. Okay. These guys on the left are the ones we completely finished, and for the most part, so we're cleaning them up. And here's one that needs to be uniformed with the deburring tool. Um, the only thing I think I would have done a little bit differently is make the jackets just a teeny bit longer. Maybe um, two tenths of an inch longer. So it would cover the rest, you know, we'd have a little bit of um, jacket curled over. Like this guy here. But it's not a big deal. Because you're going to make these in lots. And once you get used to your dies, you're going to be able to do all kinds of interesting things with it. Different core materials. Um, I'm even thinking about using a roller bearing to crush in there in order to make a, a penetrator. But I'll have to see what the laws are about that. Let's go ahead and weigh them. I'll uniform this last one and we'll weigh them. Alright, let's weigh them out. Um, I already weighed them just to save time on video. Um, they weigh right around 100 and 42 and a half grains. They're within about a half a grain, three quarters of a grain of each other. So even there within, there's a one grain difference. Extreme spread is still less than one percent um, weight variation, which is really nice. You know, for a handgun bullet, that's great. Especially making it on a reloading press. You can't beat it. So they're really consistent. Um, the only thing I would probably do differently is I would weigh my cores if I want to get some really exacting stuff going. But other than that, now we got some really nice jacketed bullets. And I'm going to go ahead and I already got uh, a bunch of stuff loaded up. And hopefully tomorrow the weather will be clear enough to where I can go shooting. And I'll take my Smith & Wesson 610 out and put these on paper see how well they do. Hey, thanks for watching.